Hey everyone and welcome back to another beginner's guide in Starfield. Today I would like to take some time to share with you all the basic information you should know before you start building your first ship in the game. By the end of this tutorial you have a solid foundation and a pretty good idea on how to build your ships. First let's talk about when and where you can actually build your ships. Building ships is pretty much available from the get-go in the game. You just need to finish the initial story mission, but once you land at Atlantis, you can go ahead and start building. There are several locations where you can design and assemble your vessels. The first place you can do that is in major cities. If you follow the storyline, the first major city you will come across is Atlantis. Another location where you can build your ships is in Star Yards, as these are specialized construction facilities designed specifically for ship building. And these will have more defined building parts depending on which manufacturer owns the Star Yard. Another place where you can do some ship building is on a civilian outpost. These are smaller, more remote locations and not every outpost has the possibility to work on your ship or purchase ships. And the final one is on your personal outpost. If you have built yourself a landing bay with a ship builder, then you can also work on your ship, purchase ships, and so on. And if you're interested in building your own landing bay with ship builder, I did touch on that in my video about building your outpost. Now, each of these locations will have one or more ways to build or purchase ships. One of them is by talking to the ship service technician, which normally is standing near the landing bay. If you don't find a ship technician, you can also find a ship service building which will have the technician inside. If you're going to a civilian outpost and you find yourself a shopkeeper inside, then you should also be able to talk to them and activate the ship building or purchasing. And if you, for example, go to a star yard or a showroom, then you will be able to find a kiosk, which you can then activate to build, or you find a salesperson or the manager to also activate the ship building and purchasing. Now, each location will have its preferred manufacturer. So if you're looking for a certain cockpit or module, you will need to travel to the correct locations. Apart from that, some modules can only be obtained at the star yards or the sales rooms. Ships and Starfield are divided into three distinct classes, A, B and C, with C being the best class. Now, this doesn't really make sense to me as it always felt like A is the best grade on your paper. I'm not entirely sure why they reversed that, but anyway. The better the class of your ship, the better modules you can install that make it more capable in combat, travel and exploration. It is possible to unlock these classes by upgrading your skills. You will need to upgrade your piloting skills, both to be able to fly higher class ships and build them. The piloting skill can be found in the skill tree under Tech. Another important skill you want to unlock is Starship Design. This skill can also be unlocked in the same category. Mastering Starship Design will allow you to build more unique modules that have better statistics than the stock versions. The last tier of that skill will also give you access to experimental modules. To be able to unlock Starship Design, you will also have to unlock the tier it is in. That means you will have to unlock a few other skills before until that tier opens up for you. Now, when you're hovering over the modules, you will actually see on the left side which skills you have to have unlocked before you can build them. As far as I've seen, it's not possible to build a ship from scratch. So you will either have to modify a own ship or you can purchase one that you can upgrade along the way. It is however possible to remove every part of the ship and then start new. Just double click and remove it. Every ship in Starfield must have the crucial component installed before it can be accepted in the game. The non-negotiable modules are a reactor, a grav drive, a cockpit, a landing bay, a docking bay, engines, a fuel tank and landing gear. Further, you also have some essentials. While not having these won't block you from completing the ship, they will be needed to survive the attacks in space. So a shield generator and weapons should be installed. And finally, as looting is a big part of Starfield, cargo is a nice thing to have. Not necessary, but you will want it. One last piece of information that I would like to share is that the ship reactor is what determines the class of your ship. That means that if you build a ship with an A-class reactor, you will not be able to use any higher class modules like grav drive and engines that are, for example, B or C-class. However, if you use a C-class reactor, you can build lower class modules on the same ship. All right, with that out of the way, let us get into the builder itself. All right, so we're going to have a chat with the uh, ship technician here. I like to view and modify my ships. Okay, no problem. This one here. All right, so we are now in the ship menu. If you want to do ship building, you can see there is a ship builder option here. 
There is also an upgrade ship option here and this is allowing us to make this our home ship. So for the moment the uh, Star Eagle is my home ship. If I would say make this my home ship then this will be the ship that shows up on the landing bay. Let's say you don't want to go into the ship building itself. You just want to upgrade some modules. Then you can go to upgrade ship. And then you will see a few selections here that you can upgrade. So I can say I want to upgrade my weapon 2. I want to upgrade my weapon 1. I want to upgrade my engines. So if I want to upgrade my shields, I click on it. I click on it again. And now it's going to show me the shields I can install instead of the one we have right here. Now, as you can see, none of these are actually doing better than the ship I, the shield I have on this one. That's not what we want to do. We want to do ship building. So we're going to go to ship builder. And that is going to open up the ship building menu. And here we now know everything we need to know. On top, we can see the vendor's credits. We can see my credits. And you can see what the total cost will be when you're building the ship. Now we go back into that in a second. On the right, we have a, a level. So with that, I can actually go up or down a level. And that's going to be very important when you're wanting to build in a certain height on the ship when the snap point doesn't work we will probably get to that as well on the left side you can see what my reactor is we can see what the power is i have from that reactor and you can see what the uh, maximum power is i can give to each of these on the bottom we can see all our stats of the current ship now we can see we have a uh, 48 particle weapons we have 83 particle weapons so we have two particle weapons i'm not entirely sure which is which and then we have the missile down here, which gives 148 damage. The hull, 1,273. That's the health of the hull. We have 1,350 shields. Our cargo on this ship only has 260, which is not a lot. We can have six crew in this ship. We have a 30 light years jump range. Our mobility is 100, which is pretty okay. We have a top speed of 130. And the weight of our ship is 1,180. On right here, you can see nominal which means that this ship is working perfectly. There is no uh, errors and there's no warnings. So we're good there. All right, I think that's the basics of the builder. What we're going to do now, we're going to delete this ship and we're going to rebuild a small ship. And if there's anything coming across that I need to clarify, I can do that in the build. So I'm going to double click on this and that is going to select everything. Now, if you're on a controller, you can do the same. There's a select all button. If I just do select all, it will select each building part as well. And then we can just press delete and now everything is gone. All right, you can see we have now a total of 57,000 credits right here. That's the price we got for all the parts we would sell. That means if I'm not going to be building a ship, we're going to be deducting money from that price until we get to zero and then we're going to start paying for the ship. On here, you can see nothing is in here anymore. We don't have any weapons. We don't have any reactor, nothing. And everything here is set to zero because there is simply nothing in here. Then here you can see we have eight errors. You can check if you press on flight check right here. It's going to show you all the errors that you have here that you have to follow up. So we can see cockpit, dockers, engines. We all need to build these. Now to start building our ship, we just have to press the button to add. Now here on my controller, on my keyboard, that's G. I'm going to start with a reactor. That's the power. And because this is a beginner's guide, I'm going to be using the uh, beginner's parts as well. So we're going to stay in A class and we're going to make sure there is no required skills for it as well. I think if we build this one here, that should be a good one. That has a 20 generated power. If you look at this left, it has a 20 power. It has a pretty decent repair rate and health for an A class. So I'm going to use the reactor, this one here. This is an A class, simple A class reactor. Now, if you look at the reactor, you will see there is a few snap points. There's a snap point here, 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 on the bottom. There is no snap point on the back. That means that this is actually only one sided. So we cannot snap anything on the back. So let's go and build our craft drive. We can do this in two ways. We can either just point nowhere, press G, and then we can go to the craft drive. You can see it's going to place it in the center point uh, as it's not snapped anywhere. If I have taken the one, let's say, uh, let's take this one here, the Helios drive. Then you will see I will be able to place it somewhere or I will be able to snap it on certain snap points that are available. Now, as you can see right here, I can only snap it on the bottom and there is no other snap points that allow me. If I'm going to press R, which is going to lift my building uh, camera, 
you can see I'm now able to build it on top or on the bottom. We don't really want to build it uh, here. We want to actually build it against the reactor. So we can actually just point at the reactor where the snap point is. Just press G now, add. And now it's going to show you each building block you can actually build against that snap point. So it's going to take away the grav drives that are not able to be snapped on that side part. If I go here and I press here, you will see I have another selection where there is a few more graph drives that were not possible to be used because it was in, in there. So I'm just going to go here and we're going to select a graph drive, which is a class and doesn't need any skills. So this should be OK. This gives us a uh, 23 jump trust and a graph drive health of 76. If I snap this on it, you cannot see that I got a jump range of 30 light years, which is a bit of a weird thing because the graph jump trust is only 23. Now I've been trying to figure this out but I cannot understand how the 23 light years graph drive can give me 30 light years jump range. Either way the mass of your ship will influence the distance of your jump range so the heavier your ship becomes the less jump drive that drive will give you. In the meantime we have a 446 hull, uh, health, we have a 70 mass. You can also see right here the price has started dropping. So we only have 34,000 and you can see we also have our graph drive ready in here now and the reactor is giving power of 20. I think we're going to snap the tank on the back here or we're going to snap the tank here. So we're going to go on the top of the graph drive and we're going to take a tank and I'm going to take one again, uh, the one that is going to be allowed to build. So we're going to take this one here that has a uh, 70 fuel because this one is a... Uh, rank 2 as you if you don't have the skill yet you cannot build this one yet so let's just build this one on top i'm going to move that uh to the back because then we will be able to build something on top here now in the front right here we're going to add once again our building part and we're going to go to our bay which is the landing bay we have two options right here we can add you can see they have a bit of a value and they have a bit of an extra mass i'm going to use the light uh, landing bay here like that and then that is going to be lifting the ship up as well. As you can see, it's always going to lift it up until it hits the lowest point. On top of here, we're going to build our cockpit. So I'm going to press G again. We're going to go to our cockpit. Now we can be able to build two cockpits. As you can see, they don't change much except for this one has 20 cargo extra. It also weighs a little bit more and costs a little bit more. On the back right here, we're now going to snap a module as you can see there's a whole bunch of modules right here we have some hope tech we have some nova now some of the parts in this list are not sold at the atlantis shipyard actually these are the parts from the ship i just removed so this is a very interesting technique if you for example would like to build a ship out of parts from different manufacturers you can for example go to hope tech put a ship together with all the parts you would like to use then fly over to neon add some more parts on the same ship from the uh, strout eklund showroom then move on to another shipyard and so on. Once you collect all parts you think you need, you can then land at any shipbuilder, clear the ship and the parts of that ship will be set aside for you to build with. So we're going to continue building in the Nova style. As you can see, this is Nova. We're going to keep on building a Nova two by one. That means it's actually going to take two blocks. While this one is one, as you can see, it only takes one block. So it's one by one, two by one. Now, if I press to the left and the right, I will be able to change the purpose of that room. As you can see right now, it's an all-in-one. This is an armory. This is a captain's quarters. This is a computer core. And each of these will also allow you to get extra crew. If you look at the left side, you can see, for example, that the computer core gives me one, one extra crew station. But if I go to the control station, that gives me four crew stations. That means I can I have four and then of course my person, personal one, as you can see, we already have one max crew. That means I'm going to have five crew that can join this ship. We have the infirmary, we have the living quarters, we have the science lab and we have the workshop. Depends a bit on what you want to build. A workshop is very handy because then it allows you to also do some uh, crafting or you go to the science lab and that allows you to do some, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals and things like that as well. You can also see we have passenger slots. That means that allows you to actually have people with you. There are some missions where you just have to bring people from one place to the other place. That for you will need some passenger slots. Anyway, I'm going to go for the workshop because I do like using the workshop. And we're just going to build that right here. All right, there we go. So now we have kind of the basis. If I now look at my ship, you will see 
this is where we're going to enter. This is going to be my docking where I can go in my landing bay. I will enter in this room and then I will have access to this and I will have access to my cockpit. Now, of course, if you look on the right, you can see we still are missing things and it's pretty obvious. We're missing the engines, we're missing landing gears and of course, we also need to build a docker. Now, what I want to do is I want to build a docker at the same line of the access port here. So it's just it's one line and I don't have two lines just then this room is going to be nice and open to you. So, and here we're going to press G. We're going to go to our docking. There we go. And we're going to just use the slim docker. You can place these on that, but you can look, they are pretty bulky. So I'm just going to pick the slim docker and place it on top of that. All right. So now that I've done that, we're going to have to start with the landing gear and the engines. Let's start with the engines. I'm going to snap two landing uh, engines to the left and the right of this reactor. So we're just going to go to the snap point, press G. Go to the engines and we're going to look for, I think, a white dwarf, I would say. And we're looking for the white dwarf that is allowed to build here. A-class, engine thrust, 11,340. Now, I can take this one, duplicate it and move to the other side. If I take it, I press Control and I press G. I now duplicate it to the other side and then I have another option that says flip, like that. And that is going to allow me to snap it on the same height as well. There we go. We only have one error left, so that's the landing gear. Now if I'm going to snap the landing gear on the side of the ship, we're going to go to here. I'm going to say uh, gear. And now we have two options. We have the uh, static one or we have the forward and the right one. I'm going to place one here like that and we're going to duplicate this. I think if I uh, flip it, it's going to automatically... There uh, we go. You can see now I have two landing engines. According to the ship, this should be okay. <laughs> it's not normal, but okay. Flight check, you can see everything is okay right here. No problems. Two landing gears is perfectly. We're just going to have the engine hanging on the ground. Uh, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do, we're going to build two more landing gears on the side here later. Now, the reason why the ship says it's okay is just because the mass of the ship is light enough for two landing gears. But we will be adding some more parts as well, so that is going to change in a bit. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to add some weapons to this as well. And I also need to add a shield. So we're going to add the shield on the back here, and we're just going to press G again. Let's go and find the shield. And we're going to look for a shield that is A-class. This one has a 405 shield. There we go. Now we have a shield as well. And we're going to add some weapons on this as well. On the top here, I'm going to add missiles. So I'm just going to press G on the top. We're going to go to weapons and we're going to look for missiles. I think we're going to look for this one right here. 4000 range has a hull damage and shield damage of 37, which is not bad. And we can just place that on top right here. All right. And on the bottom here, we're going to add two more weapons. Now we want to focus on something that's going to damage the hull. So we're going to have to use cannons. As the missiles are really going to be damaging the shields pretty well, we want to make sure we have a weapon that also damages the hull when we want to take it down. Um, we're looking for a cannon that is... There we go. You can see this cannon here has a hull damage of 18.7 and a shield damage of 5.5. So I think this cannon is a pretty good supporting gun once you've taken out the shield. So I'm going to place that cannon here. I'm going to duplicate that as well. I'm going to snap one here. Now you might have noticed a new error popped up in the bottom corner. Ship has weapons that must be assigned to a group. So now we can go to weapons. You can see it right here. We have a weapon assignment missing. So we're going to go to the weapon tab here. And these are the three weapons. One, two, three or zero, one, two, zero, one, two. And this is the left mouse button. This is the right mouse button. And this is the G on the keyboard. I'm not entirely sure which buttons you press uh, for the controller. So on the top one here, we're going to assign our cannon. And on the bottom one, which is the G, I'm going to assign my missile launcher. And then later I can add an extra weapon here that is going to be controlled with my mouse. So now if you go back, you can see that the ship is missing a weapon assignment. That's just because there is one slot and that's okay. All right. Now, according to the ship builder, this ship is okay, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, you can just visually see that we need more landing gears. So we're just going to add a few more to make it look better. So let us install another landing gear. We're going to switch to the aft and we're going to do the same on the other side. Now this ship doesn't have a lot of cargo. It only has 220 cargo, which is not a lot. 
if you want to build more cargo you will have to expand your ship what we can do for example we could delete these two on the side and what we can do we can go to structural we can take a strut and then we can snap the strut instead of the landing gears that is going to allow us to snap a container on the bottom and then later on we can snap the landing gears on the sides of the struts we could put a demos bracer or we could put a um let's see let's take a radiator nova radiator here uh let's add that one and we're gonna duplicate that one we're gonna place that one here I'm not too convinced about this angle. It would be nice to be able to rotate it. Anyway, because of that, I can now go here. I can go to my gear again. Add my aft ones. Like that. And then on the bottom here, we can add our cargo. So if I now go to cargo, it's now possible to add some extra cargo below here. This one has 210, 245, 320. So we could add that one here and we could add the same here. There we go. Now we can see we have a ship that has uh, some decent cargo now. It has uh, 860 cargo, which is nice. But of course, it also has dropped down your mobility to 59. If we look at the warnings, you will see it's going to say you have to reduce your mass or add engines to improve the mobility, which you could do on top here. You could say I'm going to add another engine on top to just boost that mobility of that ship uh, like that. There you go. So now we have a bit of more mobility. If we do this flight check, we only are missing one weapon. And that's it. Now, be aware that this docking port right here, as you can see, there's a little ring there. You can see that ring rotating. That is the height where your docking port will come out. If I would build higher than the docking port, it will also give you an error. So if I would, uh, let me just move this away. If I would build this hamp and I duplicate that one on top now, you will see you get a second error which says docker modules need to be on the outside edge of your ship. That means this is too high. To blocking your docker so you have to uh, make sure that you stay below the blue circle ring there of your docker all right that should be a pretty basic ship as you can see on the top there it costs me now 13,000. of course it costs me more as i used the credits of the previous ship i destroyed before i started building we can now exit the ship builder by pressing tap it's going to give you again the same warning we got there about the weapon that doesn't matter we can just accept it and now the ship is completed. We can now select it as our home ship. We just press down there, make home ship. Then we can exit the ship builder. And we can have a look around. You can see it right there, the ship we just built. Now, as said before, this is a very basic ship design. This guide was only just aimed at giving you the basic knowledge of that, allowing you to get creative yourself and build your own amazing ships. I probably have missed some details while recording this video, so definitely check out the comments below to see any more tips and tricks from other viewers. And I do hope you found this guide useful and gets you started. And if you have any questions, you can always drop them in the comments below or join the Discord. Thank you so much for watching and the best of luck. This was Weeblebum, goodbye for now.